Hello friends, my name is Bunny Ness and today I have part 5 of my bookshelf tour slash unhaul. This is getting easier and easier as I do it. Like there's less hemming and hawing and also like I'm tired. <laughs> I just want, I want I want to finish doing this. Right now we've moved on to my third case and we're starting up at the very top. And so that first shelf across was a lot more series. Starting with the Mortal Coil trilogy by Emily Savada. These three books were sent to me by the publisher when the last one came out. I have not read these yet. I am very interested in it, however, so I'm keeping these. Next I have Every Heart a Doorway and Down Among the Sticks and Stones by Shannon McGuire. I have read Every Heart a Doorway and I gave this three and a half out of five stars. I have not read Down Among the Sticks and Stones as of yet, but I want to reread the first one before I keep going on in the series, which is something you will hear me say again as we keep talking. Next I have the Broken Earth Trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. So I've read the fifth season, loved it, five out of five stars, but I have not read the other two books in the trilogy. I kind of want to reread the fifth season before I move on, but we actually did a group read of this in Snark Squad, and I tried to reread it and I wasn't in the mood for it but it happened to me when I first tried to read the fifth season I actually tried to read it twice and I just couldn't get through it but the moments that I sat down in the correct mood to take on kind of just the intensity and the scope of what N.K. Jemisin has written like I flew through it I loved it so this is definitely something that I have to be in the mood for and I have to have like a certain amount of like attention and mental capacity I feel like to enjoy these books so I know that I will get to these I know that I will love them. I'm just waiting for the correct time. Next I have Fruits Basket volumes 1, 2, and 3 and I have my graphic novels and manga on a different shelf but I put these up with the series because I needed to take up space. <laughs> And it looked, you know, these are organized by what looks the best. So this looked the best up where it was. I have not read these, but I'm keeping them. Next, I have the Neapolitan Novels by Elena Ferrante. And I love these books. I have read them all. I think I gave the first one three and a half or four out of five stars. And all of the other ones four and a half to five stars. The first one does start a little bit slowly. It gets, it takes a while to get into it. And it's sort of, it's ambling and rambling at you in the way that you're like what you haven't really picked up the thread of the type of story that Ferrante is telling but by the time that I got to the end I was like just absolutely sold on this sort of everyday drama and then also the way that obviously place is such a like important thing inside of these stories and the way that we follow these two young women that we meet at the very beginning just through their lives and I I love these so much. I've read My Brilliant Friend now three times including once to do a podcast episode right before the season one of the adaptation came out. I know season two is out but I, I want to go back and re-watch season one before I watch season two but in general just love the Neapolitan novels. Next I have a second copy of the His Dark Materials series. This is a different edition obviously. So this is the Northern Lights, the Subtle Knife, and the Amber Spyglass. I still I have a bookmark in here. I don't know from when but um I have finished reading that so <laughs> <laughs> I've read these all multiple times and we do have podcast episodes dedicated to each of these in the series as well as one for season one of the HBO BBC adaptation so yes I'm keeping these. Next I have the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy by Lainey Taylor and I love these. I really do love these. I love Lainey Taylor's very flowery writing and I love sort of the angst and dramatics of the series. They are things that don't necessarily work for me always and that haven't worked for me in other series but something about the way that Taylor writes and explores it just hit the spot for me. We are currently in the middle of a group read for these. We actually started it like back in May right in the thick of all the pandemic stuff so our, our podcast scheduling just got off whack but we will be doing a podcast episode about this trilogy so I'm going to be rereading these soon and I can't wait to kind of explore a little bit deeper why these work for me as well as they do so that is upcoming and yes I am keeping these. 
these. Next I have House Moving Castle, Castle in the Air and House of Many Ways by Diana Wynne Jones and I have read all three of these. I love House Moving Castle, five out of five stars. Castle in the Air was okay. I didn't enjoy it as much as these other ones but there's still that atmosphere and the fairy tale sort of storytelling that I enjoy and then House of Many Ways I really enjoyed so then I gave that four out of five stars so like five, three, four and the series as a whole is one that I enjoy and I know that I will revisit. They are fun to revisit so I'm keeping these. Right below that I have a shelf of different edition of classics so I'm keeping all of these but I just wanted to show you what they are. First I have these Puffin and Bloom editions, A Little Princess, Heidi, Little Women, and Anne of Green Gables. Next I have these vintage classic editions of Jane Austen books so Pride and Prejudice, Emma, Sense and Sensibility, and Mansfield Park. Next I have these editions which I don't know what they're called. I feel like I bought these on Book Outlet on that first order apparently that I spent a million dollars on. I'm also missing two of these. One is A Little Princess and one is Peter Pan and my nieces have borrowed those so they've got those two but yes I'm keeping these. Next to those I had these books facing out so you couldn't see what they were mainly to fill up the space and then I had it in an order where I went from like yellow on so it matched the colors but these are <laughs> a bunch of let's see what we have here Nancy Drew Files books so when we started um, Snark Squad and we knew we were going to be recapping these, I bid on like a lot of I don't know how many Nancy Drew Files books on eBay and it was like, you know, a couple bucks. It was really, really cheap and I figured, eh, we'll get to all of these books eventually even though they're super, like I have 8, 9, 43, 28, 22, 35, and 10 in this handful of Nancy Drew Files books. So I am holding on to these because I still have this hope that we are going to recap more Nancy Drew Files books but also I don't know just now this is sentimental because it's tied to the very beginning of Snark Squad. Like one of the first things that I ever did for Snark Squad was purchase this lot of books. I also have these three Sweet Valley books so I have Promises Rags to Riches. I have two Rags to Riches. I don't know why I have two rags to riches. Okay, I guess I can get rid of one of those. <laughs> if I remember correctly, these two are already recapped and posted. We might be on number 17 and this is 15 and 16, but I will hold on to those. I have this copy of Silver by Norma Fox Mazer, which is missing a cover. I don't know if this is any indication of how much I read this book and reread this book at, I don't know even what age, but it was a very young teen, I would say. So I reread the crap out of this book. I, I remember that the main character grew up like in a trailer park and she is able to attend like one of the better and richer schools in the area and so she ends up trying to make friends with this girl that she kind of gets like infatuated with but it turns out that that girl's life is not all it's cut cut out to be. I guess I remember a lot more about this now as I'm talking about it um, but I, I reread the crap out of this. Obviously it's not in great shape but it's one that I keep for sentimental value and just because it has that really strong tie to kind of my early reading life so I had it like just facing out on the bookshelf. I think I got this at the used bookstore that I talked about in my last video. Yeah it had to be used bookstore not library sale but it is just fairy tales by Ruyard Kipling. I don't know what I did with my original copy of these fairy tales but this is another one that I read a lot of. I had these and I had the Just So Stories. I got another copy of this just because it's something that I grew up reading as well. I told you I was going to keep that entire shelf and I did. On the next shelf we have more tall books so book of the month books and tall hardbacks. So I have The Blinds by Adam Sternberg and I got this August 2017. I don't know that kind of sounds interesting. I'm gonna say that I'm holding on to this instead of unhauling it but I will trust your opinion if anybody has any about these books but TBR. The Woman in the Window by AJ Finn. I read this and it was fine but truly not as entertaining as the story that came out about AJ Finn afterwards. I don't know. I, I'm kind of indifferent to keeping this. I don't know. I guess I'll keep it for now especially to see if I like need it to fill in aesthetically somewhere and if not if as I'm arranging I feel like eh, I can get rid of it then I will but this was fine. It was 
I mean, it was not great. It was just fine. A Million Junes by Emily Henry, which I gave four and a half out of five stars to, and I loved, and I'm keeping. Emma in the Night by Wendy Walker, which I gave, I think, three or three and a half out of five stars to, and I'm keeping. The Broken Girls by Simone St. James, which I was pleasantly surprised by, and gave four out of five stars to, and I'm keeping. An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green, which I gave four and a half out of five stars to, and I'm keeping. The Girls by Emma Klein, which I got pretty early on. Yeah, July 2016 in my book of the month and I never read and I, I I feel like I will read this I feel like I will read this so I'm gonna go ahead and keep this on my TBR things in jars by Jess Kidd which I gave four out of five stars to and I'm keeping the woman in cabin 10 by Ruth Ware I've never read anything by Ware, and I feel like everything that I hear is that people enjoy her stories but just like which one is your favorite is like very varied from person to person so I don't even know what to think about this and whether or not I will like it. Look at Ruth Ware's author photo. That is some like big Hogwarts professor vibe she's got going. Burial Rites by Hannah Kent, which I remember reading and just being kind of impressed with the scope and like the research that went into this. So I gave it four out of five stars and I'm keeping. Into the Waters by Paula Hawkins, which I read The Girl on the Train and I enjoyed that while I was reading and it was like fine in retrospect. I have a bunch of these that I'm just kind of on the fence on. I'm gonna put them all together and maybe like come back. <laughs> Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson, which I was pleasantly surprised by and just got me right in the feels. It is a very weird and short book that packs a punch. I gave this four and a half out of five stars, I believe, and I'm keeping. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid, which I gave four and a half out of five stars to and I'm keeping. Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. I loved everything I never told you. And I actually recorded like a standalone review of that book. I know that I did, but it's somewhere in the transition between making content on this channel and making book reviews over on Snark Squad's channel. Like I lost that review. But anyway, I really enjoyed that book. So I was really excited about this, but I just haven't been motivated to pick it up ever. And I think that I will, especially because there is a TV adaptation. So I'm going to hold on to this for now. American Gods by Neil Gaiman in which I really enjoyed the crap out of reading and I gave five stars to. Light from Other Stars by Erica Swyler which I know is not for everybody and it's really weird but I just enjoyed it and I gave it four and a half out of five stars. That went by pretty quickly especially because I just kept an entire shelf so I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna sneak in one more shelf here and see if that helps me cut down on how many videos I have left to make. The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows by Ava Lavender by Leslie Walton and I read this and loved it when I read it. I think I gave it four out of five stars. I've always thought about rereading this, but I've heard so many mixed things about it since I have read it. And I feel it's one of those books that I feel like if I go back to, I'll probably have different feelings on, but will I? Because it was very flowery and very symbolic, which I think are two of the things that people take issue with here. So I'd be curious to revisit this, but as it stands, it lives very highly in my memories and I'm keeping it. A Madness So Discreet by Mindy McGinnis. If you're keeping tabs at home this is the third unread Mindy McInnes book on my shelf so you know that's a thing but I'm keeping this. <laughs> the Rest of Us Just Live Here by Patrick Ness which I gave four out of five stars to. The thing I remember most about this book is this sort of idea of being like the unchosen ones and also it has like a romance element to it but the way that it ended was really refreshing because it also echoed this message of like just as not everybody is the chosen one like not every person you date is the one and I thought that that was really neat so overall it lives pretty positively in my memories and I'm keeping this it also has those really great bright yellow sprayed edges so you know not that that's why I'm keeping it but I'm just saying <laughs> the graveyard book by Neil Gaiman which I love and I gave five out of five stars to and I'm keeping we are not from here by Jenny Torres Sanchez which I gave four out of five stars to been talking about this one recently because I read it recently and just the emotional impact of this book even though it started a little bit slow and had some pacing things but it was a really memorable reading experience and I'm keeping this Ooh, passenger by Alexandra Brack and like that feels like a throwback that feels like a booktube throwback to me I mean I know her first series was like even more like classic of its dystopian time but I feel like when this came out everybody was like oh my gosh here comes Alexandra Bracken again did I read this no is it like really beautiful underneath the cover 
yes yes it is that's about as much as I know about this book I think it's like time traveling pirates is that right don't don't correct me if I'm wrong <laughs> this is like beautiful and as much as I want to convince myself that I'm curious it's blurbed by Sarah J Mass. not that that's like the reason I should unhaul it but Oh, uh, I kept all those other ones. I feel like I have to be honest and unhaul that. Oh, that one hurts a little bit though. The Passion of Dulce by Julie Berry. I've enjoyed one of Julie Berry's books. The title is not coming to me, but you will see it eventually. And so when this came out, I was really excited about this and then I promptly never read it. But I'm very curious in exploring more of Julie Berry's work, so I'm going to hang on to this. It makes me feel better that I just got rid of Passenger because I'm going to hang on to this. Codename Verity by Elizabeth Ween, and this is a gut punch. It's one of those books that everybody's like, I cried in it, and it might even be like a little bit, I don't know, like emotionally manipulative, all books are, but you kind of get like the, the reason that this is such a gut punch, but I read it and it totally worked on me. And there's a female friendship at the heart of it that, you know, that's always going to be like something that I am a sucker for. So I think I gave this four or five out of five stars and I'm keeping it. The Enchanted by Renee Denfeld, which I also gave probably four or five out of five stars to when I read it. I don't remember a lot about this. I do remember talking very highly about it on my channel. I mean, I, I remember the general premise, but I think that there are some really heavy topics in here that I don't remember as clearly, and I don't necessarily remember how they're handled. But when I read this, it, I really, really, really enjoyed it, especially because it has some fabulism in it. The Fever by Megan Abbott, and this was the first book that was ever sent to me by a publisher. I have a review of it up on Snark Squad, because that is kind of like what I was using at that point to talk to publishers and I gave this three and a half out of five stars. The entire thing is that like all of these girls at this high school are getting sick with something, they're coming down with something, but the the sickness really stands in place to like symbolize like female sexuality and just in general like the teen girl experience which was really neat and very interesting and the type of thing that I enjoy reading because it makes me think a little bit more about it. So I'm keeping this. If You Find Me by Emily Murdoch which is another one that feels like so long ago that I read this but I remember really enjoying this when I read it. I think it's about like a girl who grows up like in the woods cut off from everybody but then her mom abandons her. <laughs> this is like the worst plot summary pulled from like the depths of my mind but I, I thought that this was good when I read it. I don't remember a ton about it but I'm going to keep it because I enjoyed it enough that I definitely read it on ebook originally but I bought a copy because I was like yeah that was good so I'm gonna stay true to pass me who wanted to buy that because she loved it and you know that's great. A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness another one that everybody's like I bald and yes I also bald I cry at everything so the things that the general consensus is it makes you cry like I was there crying but also this is just a really good exploration of grief and it is done in sort of this like fairy tale aspect or this like story within a story aspect which I appreciated it's a bunch of grief fables <laughs> written by Patrick Ness so <laughs> uh yeah that's a yes for me and I'm keeping it Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien and this is my only copies of these books books. I really want the Folio Society ones, but <laughs> um, you know, I don't know when that's going to be a possibility, when I'll be able to justify swinging that to me, but this is a really nice one. The cover is nice and soft, and yeah, I've read all three of these. I've read the first book, The Fellowship of the Ring, multiple times, so I'm keeping this. Girls with Sharp Sticks by Suzanne Young. This was sent to me by the publisher, and more recently too, so I am still interested in reading this. I've not read anything by Suzanne Young, but this is set like at a girl girls school like boarding school and I'm already like yeah I'm in. The Snow Child by Eowyn Ivy. This is very atmospheric and feelsy so I enjoyed it. I gave it four or five out of five stars to and I'm keeping. The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo which I gave five out of five stars to and I talk plenty about loving Elizabeth Acevedo's work on this channel so I'm keeping this. Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell. So this is the third Rainbow Rowell book that we have come across on my shelves and this is the one that is the problematic one. I will I always say 
that when I read this I think I gave it three out of five stars so originally like I had a generally good time reading it there were things obviously that I had issues with I rated it kind of in the middle but I definitely didn't pick up the sorts of issues or like the extent of the issues especially as they pertain to Park but there are lots of own voices reviews out there and just in general and and on top of like considering what these reviewers are saying about the representation just sort of how it's been handled like not only by the author not acknowledging it and but also the community I don't know it has definitely soured this <laughs> in my mind and so like with the other two Rainbow Rowell books that I came across my shelves I am also comfortable in hauling this I, I don't necessarily like want to put it in somebody else's hands especially if it's going to be harmful to that person but I have no attachment to this book it was fine when I read it and now I'm like it's not worth keeping on my collection the way that I want it curated so this is going. Turtles All the Way Down by John Green which is not part of the John Green collection I was gifted. I actually bought this for myself when it came out and I gave this three and a half out of five stars. The plot was fine and sort of the driving mystery or what I thought was going to be the driving mystery was lackluster but the mental health representation in this and specifically about like the thought spirals and things of that nature were really really well done. The friendship at the heart of this made me so upset so angry but like the representation was really good so it was a mixed experience which is why it landed me at three stars but I will be keeping this. Ask the Passengers by A.S. King. I've read one A.S. King book and I did not like it. <laughs> Uh, I think I want to keep this and give it a try. <laughs> Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. As I said, I really enjoyed this. I think I gave it five out of five stars when I read it and I will be keeping it. The Brief and Wondrous Life of Oscar Wow by Juno Diaz. I have multiple Juno Diaz books on my shelves. I think I skipped over one because I wasn't sure what I was going to say about it. But this is another one of those one where the experience with the author and then things that came out in terms of his behavior specifically to women, he did end up apologizing in some regard and he's kind of been quiet since this all has happened so your mileage may vary about how to interpret this. It was very wild for me to go through that because Juno Diaz's work was and is important to me and especially in terms of learning how to read more diversely and finding things that represented me. So I have a lot of complex feelings that I have not completely like parsed out but I am keeping his work on my shelf for now. I'm just kind of not talking about it. Vanishing Girls by Lauren Oliver. Again, well documented my whole thing with Lauren Oliver and the sort of way that the more I read from her, the less I liked her books. I I pre-ordered this and I read that much of it in one sitting here and then I put my bookmark in it and put it aside and literally never went back to it. So I will get back to it. I want to read all of Lauren Oliver's work and do a deep dive into this author and my feelings about her. So this is staying on my TBR I don't know why I ended that like I had more to say but that was it this is staying on my TBR and right next to it we have Liesl and Poe by Lauren Oliver which was one of the first books I ever read by her and I really really love this it's a very simple story but it is an exploration of grief and it does so through like a fairy tale atmosphere and setting and I read this at the exact right time because I was going through one of the like most heartbreaking things of my entire life when I read this and it just I felt very seen by this exploration of grief I have very strong ties, emotional ties to this book and I gave it five out of five stars and it's staying on my shelves. This is kind of a weird one because it was more books than usual and I read a heck ton of them but also I'm keeping all of the classics whether or not I read them. So for stats <laughs> and this I'm just you know I'm doing what I want. <laughs> it's fine. Stats this video. I have three books that I'm unhauling. So Passenger, Eleanor and Park, and this extra copy of Sweet Valley High, that is so little. But again, I just, I read more of these than other shelves and I'm keeping the classics. So that's what I have. I do have four books that I said I was going to keep all of them, but I don't think that's true. But I don't know which ones to keep and which ones to let go of. So it's The Blinds, which is upside down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's The Blinds, The Girls, 
the woman in cabin 10 and into the water I am leaving these like I have no pull towards one more than the other but I just know like all four of them am I really gonna keep them and read them and like them so I really need your help with these let me know which one of these are more worthy <laughs> I guess that's a weird way to put that but you guys know what I mean that's it for me today let's chat down in the comments about all of these books and this project so far we are winding down I think I can finish up in two more videos so I hope you guys are still enjoying these thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys soon it's the same day as my last video but I just put on a different dress because the straps were kept falling off of that other one and that was annoying things in jars by Jess Kidd which I gave four and a five Four and a five out of five stars. <laughs> the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. What did I give? This is what I'm going to check up on because what did I give this?